Hey everybody, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris FX, and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial. This time we're going to be taking a look at part two of my look at the BCC7's brand new three-way color grade effect. And we're going to take a look at a technique that we did in part one, and I'm going to show you a very different way and a very easy way to do it in part two. And I'm also going to show you how one of the tools that you have at your disposal can be looked at in a very different way as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to escape out of QuickTime here and I'm going to command Q and I'm going to command tab into After Effects. Now I am using After Effects CS5 but obviously as you probably are already aware BCC7 is also available as a 32-bit plugin. Now obviously I'm using the 64-bit version. Everything I'm going to show you works the same in both versions of the plugin. Okay so as you can see I have my clip here from Digital Juice's Video Tracks HD so what I'm going to do is just drag it down here and I'm going to drop it into my timeline because here's the situation that we have. We have our farm machinery here and the problem that we have is, is that the client has realized that this vehicle should have two different colored tanks on it. The one on the left should be yellow and the one on the right should be green. Now anybody that works on anything that has to do with cars is going to know what a very common situation this is. Trust me, I did a lot of work on stock footage of cars and they change from country to country and in Canada from province to province. So getting in there and doing slight changes to color and things like that is something that's very common for a lot of editors out there. And I'm going to show you right now how to do it in what looks like a very simple situation, but believe it or not, it's not. Okay, so let's get in and show you what I'm talking about. What we want to do is we want to take this tank here and we want to change its color to that sort of a neon-y green sort of kryptonite type color. Now most people might say, well, you know what, you showed in the last tutorial how you could just do a mask and you could just move the mask or we can track it, you know, and that's probably the best way to do it. In most cases, I'd say yes, but if you take a look, if I drag along this footage, you can see that as this farm vehicle is moving along, that tank is bouncing up and down very slightly. So even a track might be a little bit tricky. And you're going to see what is also going to cause problems in this track is the water or the liquid that's in here. You can see it's moving all over the place. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to do this as a key, but not a key in the way that you might think. What we're going to do is we're going to key this color here, this yellow color, and we're going to change it to be green. And it's very quick and very simple, and it's perfect for shots like this. Okay, so let me show you how it's done. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create a mask. Now, we don't have to, but it's the easiest way to do this because in this situation, we only want to isolate this yellow color here. If this color yellow was the only thing in the shot, we wouldn't have to use a mask. But I'm going to use a very general mask because you'll remember Remember in part one, I used a very specific mask to mask around the construction worker's helmet. So what I'm going to do is just come back to the beginning here. I'm going to select my clip. I'm going to come up to effect and I'm going to select BCC three-way color grade. Now remember, if you don't have it right at the top here like I do, as you can see, I've been working with it. You can simply come down to BCC seven color blurs and it's the very first effect right there. So I'm going to apply it and you'll see that immediately it appears right here in my effects palette. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to minimize inside lift gamma and gain. And I'm going to come down here to mask shape because I'm not going to use an After Effects mask for this at all. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and I'm going to use an egg shape mask because I've actually already masked this. Now, once I've turned on egg shape mask, what I'm going to do is just press Command and V on my keyboard. And you can see that if I come over here and I press U on both Mac and Windows, you can see that I've already come in and I've already done this for the first 10 seconds of the shot. So what I'm going to do is just shorten this down to be 10 seconds long because 20 seconds is too long for everybody to sit through. Okay, there we go. And you can see now that what I have here, if I select three-way color grade, you're going to see there's my egg-shaped mask and it's just a very general mask. And it goes along and you can see we got a lot of space in here. So it's nothing too specific because as you can see that tank is bouncing up and down quite a lot. And there we go right to the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we'll just stay at the end here. That's fine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here now to where it says key mode. You can see it's almost hidden there. And what I'm going to do is come over and I'm going to switch it from off to on. And you'll see now that key has highlighted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the drop down and drop it down. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to base the key on hue, saturation, and value. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the color that I want to key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my eyedropper and I'm going to come over here. 
Yeah, there's about good. And I'm gonna just click on that and you'll see the color over here change in the effects palette. Now what I need to do is I need to see what this key is looking like. And it's actually up here. You can see where it says render with matte. Well, what I'm gonna do is instead of rendering it with the matte, I'm gonna say show me the matte. And you'll see now that we're already in really good shape in this effect to key out just that yellow. But you can see that as light shines on it, the yellow gets reflected on everything else that's around it. So we're just gonna clean this up a little bit. And how we do that is right under our key color. You can see that we have some hue, saturation, and lightness settings that we can get in and alter. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna take the hue threshold, just drag it all the way to the left here. And let's set our hue softness to be about 20. That's looking already really good right there. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our saturation threshold to be about 16. And you can see that we're getting even closer now. Okay, so I'm gonna come down to saturation softness and we're just gonna take this, I don't know, let's put it all the way down at five. That's not too bad. You know, we can even probably go lower with that. Let's make it like one. Okay, that's looking good. You can see that we're a little bit rough around the edges, but we're gonna to get to that in just one second. Now we're just gonna bring the lightness threshold up a bit. Let's put it at about 22. Okay, you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of this back. Maybe we'll just back off on it a bit. We'll make it about 20. And last but not least, I'm just gonna blur this a little bit because blurring will probably help us here. Just set that to one. That's looking pretty good. We still got a little bit of it in here, but you can see that in most cases, we're looking really, really good so good that no one is gonna notice. And this up here might look like a mistake, but in the actual truck, that is the same color as the tank. So what I'm gonna do is just come back to the beginning here. Now, what we've basically done is we've now created an inside-outside mask. Now, if I come back and we're just gonna say, render with matte, nothing's happened. Well, that's because I haven't gotten in and changed the color yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna color correct the outside first, and then we'll correct the inside, because remember what I said, Every shot, no matter whether you think it needs it or not, every shot needs color correction. So what I'm gonna do is just come to outside correction here because remember, by doing that key, the only thing that's now being affected is this tank. So what I'm gonna do is we're just gonna take our blacks down a bit. Remember, lift, gamma, and gain is shadows, midtones, and highlights, or blacks, grays, and whites. So we're just gonna back off on this a little bit here just so we can make our darker colors stand out. Just bring this down ever so slightly here, the gamma. That's looking pretty good. And if we wanna just compare it to what it was before, remember, we have compare mode that we can look at. What I'll do is just do a compare. And you can see what it looked like before and what it looks like now, it's like worlds apart. So what I'm gonna do is just turn off compare. Now remember, compare is included with a lot of effects inside BCC7, so look for it when you're working with the different effects. Okay, so we're ready to change this color now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to inside lift gamma and gain, because remember, this is now considered the inside and everything else is considered the outside. So what I'm gonna do is just come to inside lift gamma and gain. And what I'm gonna do is just come down a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to that kryptonite type color. So I'm just gonna click here, here, and here. And you can see now that our tank color has changed. And you'll see that if I preview it right from the beginning, the tank is now green instead of yellow. And I could take that color and make it whatever color I wanted to. I could make it blue, I could make it red, I could make it purple. I can make it whatever color the client needs it to be, not the color obviously that I want it to be. Now there's one last thing that I want to point out before I wrap this up. And that is, you're gonna notice up here inside lift gamma and gain, we have this little thing that has an 11 slash three and everyone thinks to themselves, well I wonder what that means 11 slash three. Well, taking a look at the way things are laid out right now, this is the way the color wheels are gonna look in any nonlinear editing application or you know, other compositing programs and things like that. But if you click on the 11 slash three, you're gonna see that it swaps. Why does it swap? because now the color wheels represent a vector scope. So for all you advanced color correctors out there, this is gonna be exceptionally helpful for you. So I hope this two-part look at three-way color grade has helped you become more comfortable with not only color corrections basics, but how to get in and do some very advanced techniques with this very powerful yet very simple to use plugin. It's an awesome plugin and only available in Boris Continuum Complete 7. So if you have any questions, comments, or tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. 
Thanks a lot for watching.